Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a very small little vinyl record update, which is the reason why we're on the floor, because my vinyl collection lives here, and it's easier to just be able to access stuff. I feel like I'm over explaining this. So I have five records, that's a lie. I've got four records plus a CD that I thought would be fun to mention in this video. There's weirdly like a little bit of a theme going on here, but that was unintentional. This is just the previous four records and previous CD that I have acquired across the past couple of months, I think. Lots of these were gifts. Actually, all the vinyl were gifts. I'll link my main collection as well as any previous videos I've filmed, a collection update so that you can be up to date on everything I own aside from these things I'm mentioning now. But without further ado, let's get on the video because that's what you're here for. So first up, I have Francois Zadi by Francois Zadi. This is the self-titled album by Francois Zadi. Wow, I know, it's crazy stuff. I love this lady, she's great. And over the past couple of years, I've been kind of exploring all of her music, going through all of her albums, seeing which ones I like and kind of putting together like a master playlist of my favorite work by her. But one of the most iconic albums or perhaps the most iconic album that she has made in her life is this one. So yeah, this is a beautiful gatefold, got that cover. And then this is the gatefold. It's just got one LP, um, but yeah, we do have the gatefold and then the track list on the back. The record's just pressed on black and it's in one of those horrible paper sleeves. Although this one actually does have like anti-static and it's a heavyweight pressing. So this is a really nice kind of like reproduction of this album. When did this come out? I do not know, but um, I can put the information down below about everything to do with this album. In terms of my favorite songs, I already own a Francis Vardy al album, but it's like a compilation of one of a bunch of her works. So this actual album has a couple of the tunes on that compilation one. So I've got Tous les garçons et les filles and Les filles avec toi, Le temps de l'amour, Il est tout pour moi, etc, etc. Um, so fun. I need to play this one more. I actually have been thinking about putting this one on next. And that was a very lovely gift from Gorgeous Abbey who saw this book, saw this book, saw this vinyl in a record store in London for a great price. And so she very kindly gifted it to me, which is super sweet of her and lovely of her to think of me as well. We have a running theme with Abby because she also gave me the next two records. Let me just get them out. One's on the wall, one second. The Francois Hardy one also lives up there usually, but for some reason I got that one down, but I didn't get the next one down. Okay, we're back. Hopefully the angle hasn't changed too much. The next two albums I have to mention are two albums by The Strokes, um, one of my favorite ever bands. I think they're probably they're somewhere within my top three. Whether they're number two or number three, I cannot tell you, but they're very, very high up there, basically what I'm trying to convey to you. So these were both gifts, again, from Abby, like I said. First of which is First Impressions of Earth, one of my very favorite albums. I think it's great, and I'm so excited to finally own it. This is just the front and then the back. And this one actually is quite fun inside because it is just the standard black, but this is the sleeve for it. And it comes with a poster, which is so cool. Look at this. It's got the whole band in this like really interesting the art style. And then the back has a bunch of art, which is like to do with the album. Very fun. This is one of my very favorite albums by The Strokes. And yeah, one of my most listened to ones, to be honest. Like my favorite song ever by The Strokes is You Only Live Once. And that song is on this album. So that would be my number one favorite song. We also have like Razor Blade, Heart in the Cage, Juice Box, Eyes of the World. So good. Ask me anything. Oh my gosh. So good. But yeah, YOLO is my favorite. And then the other one that she gave me was Room on Fire. Also iconic and also so happy you own it. I love the art on this one. And that's the back. Reptilia, 1251. Between Love and Hate, Meet Me in the Bathroom, Under Control. So many good ones. I mean, Reptilia is just like one of the most iconic Strokes songs ever. One of the most iconic songs ever, full stop. Um, so maybe I would say that was my favorite, but no, this is so good. I don't know, I'll, I'll put my final like answer up for my favorites in the description. But yeah, let's pull this out and show you. We've got the whole band on the sleeve and again on the other side, as well as a bunch of lyrics. Super exciting. I actually saw the Strokes in august and they were lovely the crowd were one of the worst ones i've ever seen like it was at um what was the festival all points east and there was a problem with the speakers where we couldn't really hear what julian was saying like in between songs when he was like speaking to the crowd like this side of the stage i was on there wasn't a problem with the speaker so people would just be chanting like turn it up turn it up which i get why but at the same time like part of the reason why we couldn't even hear this man was because of people speaking over him telling him to speak louder so that's that was a bit annoying, but whatever. But I love seeing some of my awesome favorite songs live 
such a surreal experience. I've wanted to see the Strokes ever since I first started listening to their music and I finally got to live that dream. So the reason why I have these two albums, the reason why Abby was so kind to give them to me is because these were her personal records. So they're used, if you can see there's like a little bit of scratching on the front of this one. The actual kind of discs themselves are fine. Yeah, so basically the Strokes recently reissued these albums and they reissued them on coloured pressings and so Abby wanted to buy them and she gave me the two albums that she already owned, which she had on black. But yeah, I don't really care. The only one that I'm kind of interested in getting on coloured vinyl is Angles because I think the colour is really cute and it really suits the album. But I don't care about having these on black. I'm just so happy to finally have them in my possession. I think I now have, yeah, five albums by The Strokes. I only have a couple more to get. And then um, what do we have next? Okay, the CD. So the CD is Miles Kane's new, Miles Kane's that's so difficult to say. Mars Kane's new album, One Man Band. So I went to an album signing in London and I met Mars Kane, it was really cool. And Abby and I drove up to Sheffield where we saw Miles again. We went to his concert and then we stayed after to meet him again. When I went to the signing in London, I could bring albums I already owned, but going to the little bit after the concert in Sheffield, it was kind of like I needed to buy some merch in order to speak to him. Not that I, like it wasn't completely necessary, but I felt like it was just like, What's the word? I can't think of the word I'm trying to say, but it was just like kind of polite for me to purchase some merch. And then of course it got signed. So I just randomly bought the CD, but it's the alternate covers of the CD. So it's kind of fun colors and everything. And then it is signed by Miles and I got a cool picture with him. Maybe I'll insert a couple of the pictures on the screen. But yeah, that was a very, very surreal experience. I've been following Miles for a few years now and seeing like so many pictures of him everywhere and so many videos and stuff and then to see him in real life and obviously hearing his voice and whatever and then to meet him in real life and in Sheffield he actually recognised us from the London signing and he gave me a compliment about my hair and everything like that it was just like strange I've never met um someone who I've kind of like idolised that much so that was Miles so I did want to show you that CD just because like it's a fun new edition I don't actually really collect CDs I do have I don't know where it is, but I do have a copy of AM on CD just because I saw it in the charity shop and I felt sorry for it. Let's not even get into that. But um, I think that the car I'm going to get soon has a CD player, so I might start, you know, picking up CDs wherever I can if I can find them for a cheap price or whatever. And this one was just, you know, just hit the vibe of the signing event. And then lastly, I have a gorgeous birthday gift which I received from my friend Sophie. I was meant to be going into London a couple of days after my birthday, but I didn't get around to that in the end. So I saw her last week. And um, she gave me a belated birthday gift for my birthday in July. And she got me Jane Birkin's Je t'aime moi non plus with the B-side of Jane B, which is a little single that came out years ago. But this is actually the German pressing, which is so cool. It comes in a sleeve, which I absolutely love that when record stores actually bother putting things on sleeves. Um, but we've got this amazing, slipping out the bottom, amazing art, amazing cover, both sides. And then again, this is just standard black. It's a, my first record I have that actually has like the bigger hole in the centre. I don't know what the technical name of that is, but that's kind of fun. I haven't played this yet. If you're familiar with my collection, you would know that I already own this exact vinyl. I bought it in the charity shop, but it's actually one of the UK pressings, so the cover is very different. And so I kind of have it in my mind that I want to try and collect as many of these as possible. I think that'd be such a fun idea. I love Jane Birkin. I was devastated when she died. And she actually passed away on my birthday, which was kind of, you know, it's ironic that my friend got me one of her vinyl for my birthday when that was like an event on the day. I can't break it down because it's too, too high. But this year I read Jane Birkin's diaries, um, the first kind of volume of them. And I just like connected with her so much on like a completely different level from how you do through following her through the media or even like listening to her songs and everything like that. So I'm just very like invested in her as a person. You know, music is like eternal. So it's very special to be able to collect that and to kind of keep her legacy going. Um, yeah controversial little song probably one that won't be playing a lot to be honest but i just love to own both of these so that's that was a really special gift thank you so much sophie if you're watching this video which you might possibly be and that is it that's all i had to mention so i've got the francois hardy uh the two strokes albums little jane Barker and 45 and then the miles cd or wrong order miles cd the middle jane Barker and 45 um so a very small update but Felt like I had a decent amount of stuff to mention. I also have a doctor's appointment in a couple of hours and I am anxious for it. So it's nice to be talking about something that I love instead of sitting there worrying about that inevitably happening. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, all my other vinyl videos will be linked down below. I'm gonna link the collection separate, but I'll also link a playlist which is full of everything vinyl related. Um, yeah, subscribe if you want to stick around and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you 
super soon for another video in a couple of days. Bye-bye.